Shad Adversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make your very own sword 3D models using a free uh, 3D modeling program called SketchUp. Now the free version of SketchUp is called SketchUp Make. You can just Google it, in fact it's actually made by Google, and go and download it. There are of course much more powerful 3D modeling programs out there. Uh, Blender is also a free one, and I might try and teach myself Blender in the future. The thing that attracted me about SketchUp is how easy it is to pick up, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the real basic functionality in this program. And even though it is more limited than other programs, that's not to say you can't make some pretty awesome stuff. I've had massive amounts of fun with SketchUp, modeling my own swords, ones that are actually of a very high detail. The sword that you're looking here is actually one that I made for a comic book character of mine. The sword's name is Regalium. And yeah, just have a look at the detail that I was able to do. But having said that, you need to understand, especially with SketchUp, the more detail you make and the more complex the geometry becomes, the more time it will take to make it. And this is where SketchUp kind of falls short, because when it comes to complex geometry, it is not, well, I guess from what I've been told, I haven't used other 3D programs, but I've been told uh, making more three uh, complex geometry can be uh, more difficult and time consuming with SketchUp than other programs. But it certainly can be done, and I found it very intuitive and easy to use. And so for making swords, I've also made my own spaceships, which are also a lot of fun to make, and of course, my own castles. Uh, and I'm a big castle nut, if you're familiar with my uh, YouTube channel, castles everywhere. And uh, SketchUp has been such a great resource to be able to also just uh, visualize certain concepts that I'm talking about in videos. If I'm not even just about castles, but about swords and every other thing, just making uh, really uh, professional looking kind of, uh, you know, visual illustrations to help my, uh, you know, whatever I'm speaking or talking about. So now let's get right into it. Now, when you download SketchUp, you'll get SketchUp Make, and it'll load up, and it should pretty much look like this. You won't have any of these side bits here, which is some additional toolbars I've added uh, and so if we ever get to the more advanced stuff I can explain that but you'll notice this is your main toolbar here and uh, you actually want to place this. This is a basic toolbar and doesn't give you some of the things that I'm going to be using. So you go to view and you click toolbars and so you have the getting started one. Click that off and we want the large tool set and so you'll see a larger tool set appearing here on the side and I'll just move that down. So closing that off, uh, we are about to begin. So I've just clicked on here. This is the navigation um, icon. And so clicking around, we can now move, zoom in, zoom out, and around. One of the things that I do when I'm modeling swords, I don't do this with castles. With the castles, I do one-to-one uh, -one scale. So one meter on the model is one meter in real life and in what we're seeing here. But with swords, because the geometry can get really small in regards to the sword model. So if I go back to my sword models here, Here's uh, uh, just three examples of uh, three different sword models I have made. Pretty happy with them, and some have some really complex geometry that did take a bit of time to make. Uh, I'm not sure we'll get there to explaining it, but the reason, uh, the, the important thing about this, because some of this geometry gets really, really small, if we get down right here, uh, you see some, if I click on it and bring it up, you see these lines? These are invisible lines that are actually structuring the blade, and uh, they can get really, really small, especially when you start to scale and put in distal tapers. Um, uh, so a distal taper is the sword uh, getting thinner uh, as it goes down, not the profile taper, but the distal taper. And so this one doesn't have a distal taper, but all the other swords do. And if I just grab this one here and go and see the actual hidden geometry, and uh, some of it, if we move down, are lines that are crisscrossing. Well, technically, every single thing that you make up in SketchUp is actually going to be made out mostly of triangles, and uh, if not triangles, you can get away with squares, but sometimes squares need to be triangles, and they create a face. And so this thing here is a face, uh, and then the, uh, the rendering program can actually put a, you know, a flat surface on faces, and that's how you get your 3D model. So nothing is actually a true curve. But some of these lines get so close together that uh, the program can't actually register the distance between them because it gets so small. And so the way I do, well, the way I fix that is I actually make all my 3D models at a higher scale uh, than what the program is showing. So what you're gonna see here, if I click on the pencil tool, and this enables me to draw a straight line, uh, I'll click on it. And what you'll see here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see how the measurements, this will give us the, the scales. So I click here to get the length of this long sword here. It's going to tell me that it's 133 meters long. And of course, that's not how long swords are in real life, but I've actually scaled this up for, I think it's uh, one to 100 scale. So instead of like a 50 to one, uh, and I might be reversing them because uh, I get things mixed up. But basically everything is actually 100 times bigger in my modeling, which, gives, which enables me to do all the really fine detail. And uh, then when I want to export or anything like that, I can just shrink it down and it'll keep all the geometry as I've made it. So that's what I do. And I actually kind of suggest you to do that the same as well when modeling it. And simply everything will come up in meters in the bottom right corner and you just convert that to centimeters. So instead of, uh, you know, when it says 20, 20 uh, meters, you can just realize, no, uh, for the sake of this model, we're going to be modeling that as 20 centimeters. And so this is 133 meters, uh, this long sword here, and what that is actually telling us is that it's 133 centimeters. And I, of course, work in meters and centimeters because I'm not stuck in the Stone Age. Ah, uh, sorry, a bit of bias there. <laughs> I much prefer the metric system, all right? So... Now we have a brand new uh, page. This is what you'll get. And you'll start off with a little picture of a dude. And that's in scale. So if we were to do a line here, and uh, you, when uh, you click a line and start to move it, you can type on your number pad or your keypad the, the length that you want in meters. So if I click one, you'll see in the bottom right corner that one has appeared. And if I click one, see, see these ones? That's the amount of meters that I'm going to make this line. So if I did 10, uh, sorry, that's 110. If I did 10, that would give me 10 meters. But I just want a one meter and then click enter, and it's giving me a one meter line. This is important when you want to, uh, to you know, model to exact scales. 
We'll see. We are going to start off with a much larger one. And uh, if we want an average longsword, average longsword is generally around a, uh, about 120 centimeters. And so I'll click here. I'm going to create a new line and 120 centimeters. So this is the actual scale of the sword, much bigger than the size of a regular person. But it enables us to be able to make the model with the detail that we want. Now, when I start off, I actually make a 2D outline of the sword to begin with. And so we've got that. And then I'm just going to create a square, which will give us a surface that we can draw onto. So I'm going to go uh, 20 up. And for the sake of this, it's the model will register at 20 meters, but this is actually 20 centimeters for the scale of the sword. And then we've got 120 wide, and then we go down. And so this is uh, the beginnings of a sword. In actual fact, that might be as wide as we want the cross guard to be. Uh, a really good intuitive thing when you're modeling. Uh, see how uh, the dots kind of click, they want to kind of uh, register the edges, and it's just gone there. Well, if you do that, and you get the blue circle, the blue circle means it's the middle of a line, and we want dead middle, so we just get there. And then, uh, like, uh, I'm not going to be exact, but to get the, the hilt, will probably come up to around here, which is going to be 27 centimeters. Now, I have a couple of pre presets already on, and so, uh, for one, I actually don't have the, line, the ending of or uh, splits of lines appearing. So if I went into the Styles tab on the default tray that appears, and I click on this thing here, see this square, and then I go, you're going to have these two points on by default, which is the extensions and the end points. So we zoom here. That basically just shows you where, where things are. Now, why do I take these off, extension endpoints, uh, on my models? Well, for this simple reason. If I go back to my models here, and you'll notice that the default tray isn't on, so I'll bring back the tray, and I'll go back to the same thing, which is styles. Click here. Well, watch what happens when I click endpoints. Do you see what's happened to the model? It shows all the endpoints of the lines that are created in the model. And when you have uh, complex geometry and a lot of things, the endpoints get a bit ridiculous. Like, have a look at my most complex one, Regalia. Look at all the endpoints that are appearing here. Because, uh, oh, gee, uh, and like this pattern here, I could have just, uh, it probably might have been better if I just did a texture instead of actually modeling the indent. But I wanted the indent in there, so I did it. And uh, yeah, those endpoints can get a bit ugly. And especially when you're exporting or uh, you're wanting to just take screenshots and stuff like that, it can look a bit messy. So uh, we just want to take those off. <laughs> we can appreciate the model while we're modeling without that mess. But sometimes it's very uh, useful to see when uh, an endpoint is because uh, that can tell us where we want. Now, a couple of uh, shortcuts uh, to undo something. It's Alt uh, Backspace. So if I did that and I click Alt Backspace, that uh, gets rid of it. And if I want to bring it back, so it's Alt Y. So to bring something back that I deleted, Alt Y. Sorry, no, Control Y. So Alt Backspace, Delete, Control Y, Bring Back. And that's just step back. So uh, undo or redo. Those are the basic uh, shortcut commands for that. So uh, right here, we can get a basic layout for a longsword using standard longsword dimensions. And if we want something really basic for the cross guard, uh, we'll go down and make a cross guard about a centimeter uh, thick there. Uh, I went over a bit, so I'll just delete there. In terms of the width of the handle, uh, about four centimeters is all right, but I'm going to double check it on the models I have existing. So I'll go back here just to double check the width because uh, sometimes you can get thrown if you're just trying to measure it up by the look. Uh, and so I've actually grabbed some real swords just to double check dimensions at times. So if I want to double check the dimension, I'm just going to go start a line right here. So there, and then click on navigation, send it around, and then I can line this up to the other end. And so this is, yeah, right here, 3.6 uh, centimeters wide, but because it kind of fattens out here, um, I, it will get to about four centimeters right there. And so we're not going to be making anything nearly as complex as what the models that you see here. Uh, but perhaps, you know, I don't know if you're interested, if you're wanting to see more, uh, I might make a part two to do more complex geometry. But this is going to be fairly basic, but you'll be surprised how good it's, it looks, even while being basic. Uh, and how easily you can do it as well. Uh, and so it's not necessarily, you know, um, absolutely necessary to, for, to do complex geometry, especially when it increases the work so much. But uh, I'll leave it at that. So uh, this is giving me a basic outline for the sword. That's all good. Uh, now... Uh, Let's start with the blade. So I'm going to make the first part of the blade right up to the tip. So if I go back here, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do it a little bit uh, more basic than what we see here. In fact, the blade is going to be a bit more like this blade uh, than the longsword underneath. You see, this longsword has a ricasso and a fuller that ends off on either end. That's again a little bit more complex. But making a blade like this is actually far easier. I'm going to show you how to do it. And the first part of the blade that we're going to be making. So if I select this, and you're going to see all the hidden geometry. Okay, so it's not even going to be as complex as this here because uh, uh, when you start to add distal tapers and stuff like that, you need to break the blade up into sections. See how it's all broken up into sections? Well, I'm just going to do one big section for this part here, and then a separate part for the tip. And it'll still look pretty good. I think you'll be, still be pretty happy with how that is. So. Uh, Going back here, we'll measure down. Well, first off, let me get the profile of the blade. Um, and uh, it, we're going to be. Uh, it should look like this, basically. It should look. So the, the tip curve, I'll go 10 centimeters down here, like that. And uh, ending the blade off at about 4 centimeters wide. That's all right. And let's do the profile taper. And so let's have it flare out by about a centimeter on each end. And this is going to give us the profile of the blade. 
And so just to show you what that would look like, bring it here. Uh, and the, the way we do the tip, so so far we've only been using one tool, which is the pencil tool, tool or the line tool. Now I'm going to use a new tool here, which will give us a curve. So this one here, a two point arc, click on that. And so we were, you're going to select two points, which is going to be each end of the arc. So I'm going to do it here. And the second point is here. And then we can do a curved line. So I'm going to press escape to get out of it because I want to actually line up this arc from here, which means I start there, I'll click there, bring the arc here, and then see how it's lining up right here. This will give me control over the arc. Now it comes to rather a fairly important subject in regards to 3D modeling. And that is the amount of detail that you want to put on the swords because the amounts are right here. So there's two point arc. You're going to see a number in the bottom right corner. See 12? What that is telling me is how many lines this arc is going to be made out of. So if I do a two point arc here and go up, see how you can see the individual lines that's making it's not a perfect circle, it's made up of straight lines. And the larger I go, the more prominent those lines become. So uh, this is important because the amount of lines that I put on this arc is going to determine the amount of faces that's actually going to be on the model if I go down to this curve here. So if I go down here, okay, so with each line that's on the arc, so there's one, two, three, four, five, sorry, right here, that makes a new face in the model. And the more faces that are on a model, the, the more processing power it will take the computer to render. Now, uh, all the models here I have made for the intent to make uh, 2D image uh, pictures, okay? So they're very high detailed. If if I try to export some of these swords into, say, a video game, it could break the video game. They're way too, like, especially regalium here this sword are just so you know insanely complex that trying to render this sword in the hand of a character would just oh so in video games stuff like that they try and optimize their models to ha have them be made out of fewer faces as possible uh but also make them look really good and the way you can do get away with that like instead of saying modeling this pattern in as an indent on the sword uh, you could get away with just doing a texture like it which is just a 2d image on the face of the blade and uh, suddenly you have far few like a, you know, a much lower amount of geometry and faces to render and the computer can handle it much much better so you need to make that decision what type of model are you making do you want a high detailed one where you can't really see any of the individual, uh, you know, faces and lines so it looks like a more curve? Because when I click on the two point arc, you see the, the number here, if you type in any number. So if I go 24 and enter, I will now do an arc with, that's made out of 24 lines and see how it looks far more curved. And so if you want something to look really smooth, you would make it out of more uh, lines and faces, but the overall model is going to be uh, a lot more, more difficult to process. And so high detailed models are generally used in animations, not video games, so animations over video games and also uh, 3D renders as well. The important caveat to this, okay, the more faces that you put into a model, the longer it will take to model and the uh, more complex it becomes. If you the fewer faces, the simpler it is to do. And so because of that, I'm going to do a uh, low amount of faces. So right here, uh, two point arc, I'm actually going to do six and enter. So right here, there's just gonna be six lines and then this will give us the uh, the angle of it. And it's actually measuring from the middle. So about one centimeter up, more, more, more. Um, and so I'm gonna line it up and do uh, about 0.4 right there. And then I can just uh, do the same here, 0.4. Gives us the curve for the tip. All right, we're moving, we're moving forward. So now I have the selection, which is just the arrow, and I wanna grab this. So to do multiple selections, hold shift or control. Uh, shift, you'll notice a plus and minus symbol on the arrow. And that means when you click again, you'll unselect, select. But if you hold control, it's always select. And if you you know keep clicking on the same thing, you won't unselect it. So we're just gonna grab that. This is a cool thing, all right? Um, the, uh, the move tool, so you see here, uh, there, there's some funny little uh, feature. Well, this is how the program natively works. If I try and move this, uh, these things, watch what happens. So it's still connected with the rest of the geometry. It doesn't want to move out. So you can't just uh, select thing and move it out and have it disappear. But if I want to copy this geometry, same tool, the selection tool, I press control and see how there's a little plus sign appearing next to my cursor. That means when I select to move it now, I'm going to make a copy of it. And so I've made a copy and move it away. And I'll move it. 40 centimeters away. So now I have a copy of that. Something that's important to notice about, know about SketchUp, because this is uh, basically how everything works and how everything interacts. I've created a uh, new piece of uh, geometry, okay? Everything else, there's nothing else in this world apart from these two shapes. I've created this. Now, if I move this new shape, okay? Uh, so far, I'm, it's not connected to anything, but as soon as I put this shape down, so say I put it here and click, this is going to glue this first shape to the second shape, and I won't be able to move it off without deleting and going through a lot of trouble. So I've just put it down, and now if I try and move it, look what happens. It's stuck, okay? Where it's like super, super glue. And uh, if I keep moving and I can't move back, the only way to get rid of this geometry now is to go in and delete each individual part, which messes up faces and other things like that. So I'll step back with uh, Alt Backspace and stop myself from doing that because you can ruin whole models. If you like uh, have whole models open in uh, you know modeling and stuff and move them to another model, they'll glue together. Of course, this could seem kind of odd, like you could ruin whole models. How do you stop this? Well, you can make uh, certain models and separate them into a group. So if I selection tool, drag, select this whole thing, right click, and make group, okay? It is now in its own kind of 3D universe, basically, where it's completely separate to any other model. And so if I select to move it now and move it on top like I did before, it's still in its own kind of, you know, 3D universe and it's not glued and it's still a separate piece of geometry. 
So this is important because uh, I'll show you something with my other swords. They are grouped into pieces. So if I select on this one, it's one whole group. Okay, so that means I don't need to do multiple selections and I can move it with the whole thing where I want. But then if I open up this group, double click, okay, and then pick something, look at that. A cross guard is in its own group, separate to the blade, separate to the handle, separate to the pommel. And so if I select these three pieces and move them out, look what we have here, the blade and tang are there. And if I move uh, the cross guard down and uh, the pommel separate, I can show you that I've modeled this whole sword in the same way a real sword would be with all its separate things. If these uh, pieces were not in separate groups, uh, the cross guard would stick permanently to the blade. Same with the handle, same with the pommel. And of course, I don't want that because I like being able to have the, having the freedom to pull them apart, kind of like a real sword. So you can see the piece that they're made out of and gives me freedom when I'm actually using these models in videos uh, and so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to be doing with our simple sword here. We're going to be making the, each individual piece as a separate uh, you know, model, and then we're going to group them and put them back together. So there's a, there's a bit to you know, explain making this. Uh, this might end up being a fairly long video, but I'm going to make it as a whole thing. We're going to make this whole sword all together, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. So I've gone. So what? So, so now I've only been modeling on a 2D plane, and right now I've just made my first 3D uh, thing. So before it was only on the green and red axis. Well, now I've just put in a line along the blue axis, which is bringing us up. So we're going to be turning this 2D uh, shape into a 3D model now. And so I'm making a face that I'm able to draw on. So three wide, two down. Ah, ha, ha. So see what I've just re I just realized something. If I move back, usually that should have created a face, but I'm drawing outside of the group that I made on this blade. And so I could keep doing it, but I actually want to model within the group uh, because I want things to stick and give me the freedom. So now I'm in the group and everything else is faded out and I can, you know, work with everything connecting. So too high, three wide and down. And so now we have this bit here. And I'm only going to, well, what I'll do, I'm going to uh, model half of the sword and then we're only going to need a quarter. If we actually make the 3D model of the quarter, we can duplicate uh, those four quarters and assemble it into the full blade. But this is going to give me the shape of the blade. So in fact, if we were to move here, select these two faces, copy them down. Um, so now this is going to give us a surface draw on and we're going to be make the cross section essentially of the blade. And so the blade, uh, we'll make it kind of chunky. So we're going to go uh, six mil uh, wide at the base. So point six high. So this, is, so this is fairly chunky in standard sword sizes for the width of the sword at the base, but we're going to be making a distal taper, which will make it thinner towards the tip. So here, um, and this actually, that's fairly chunky. So, oh, actually, <laughs> I made a mistake, right? I doubled it up. I want the whole width of uh, the blade to be 6 mil, but I've done 6 mil on either side, which actually is 12 mil, and 12 mil is ridiculously thick uh, for a sword. So I'm going to select those two, grab the arrow, and I'm going to move them down uh, 0.3. Uh, do the same with the bottom one, and uh, this is going to give us the, um, the proper width of the sword. That, that looks a lot better. Okay, edge angle. Uh, we'll step it back to about maybe uh, ooh, here, sorry, 1.8. Um, and that will give us there. And if we line it up uh, there, this gives us the edge angle. And if we, if we really, really wanted to be, I usually don't do this, but this is actually fairly easy to do. Uh, so why not? Why don't we do a secondary bevel uh, to show how people would sharpen the sword? So we'll go here and we'll step it in a uh, secondary bevel, maybe 0.15 in. And uh, ooh, maybe, uh, yeah, 0 0.06. See how small we're already doing? And, and it's, it's good because I was able to point, do a 0 0.06 uh, measurement. If this was in the real, full scale, this would be 0 0.6 of a millimeter, that line that we've just done right here. And I don't think a SketchUp even registers, or you can't put in a command to do a model, something that small. Maybe, maybe they've changed it, but still, uh, it's easy to zoom in, easier to uh, make these measurements. So we'll go here. So now we have the first bevel and the secondary bevel to the edge. So uh, we've done that side, uh, and uh, this is uh, 1.2 off the center. So I'll just line 1.2, line it up there. Uh, and now we will throw the fuller in. How we do the fuller? There's two ways. You could do a two-point arc, and so two, two, and go down. The reason why I don't like this type of two-point arc is that it's too shallow on the edges. And when I look at real swords, and I've modeled these swords in the same fashion, they go. you'll notice that the fuller here goes down at a steeper angle on the edge. And so to get a, uh, a line in the way that we want, I'll go back. Um, what I'm gonna do is do the circle. So I'm gonna click here, I'm the circle tool, and I'll just go up here and uh, just to measure it, it is, so the circumference of the circle, the measurement in the bottom right corner is half. So middle out is half. And so whatever amount you put in, the total distance between the two sides of the circle is going to be double the measurement you put in. So this is 1.2. So I'm going to go here and type in 1.2 wide. This gives me my circle. I'm going to select these two lines, all right? New tool, um, scale. I'm going to click on scale and I want to shrink it down to a specific amount. And say, I just do here, uh, see the line now, the circle goes deep in on the edges, more like a real fuller. 
So I want the fuller to be about, oh, let's see, we've got three mil to work with. So if I did the fuller to go down, uh, 2.5 mil, uh, that was too much, hang on, so we go here, and so 0.25, so 2.5, so that's gonna line up there, and that's what I want. So I'm gonna, uh, it's funny, the scale tool doesn't always like to measure up with other geometries. So if I click here and I go down 0.25, and then I select the scale tool uh, here, and, uh, and see how it's not—it's not snapping exactly to this line. If I go in, it's either on one side or it's on the other. And I want this to be exact. Okay, this is one of the funny quirks about SketchUp that I've just learned through working. So to get this line to snap to uh, the distance I want. Uh, it's funny, scaling will snap to geometry outside of uh, of the group. Uh, it won't glue to it, but it will snap too. So now I've just clicked out of the group. So we see here, and I'm going to make a new line outside of the group at 0.25 down. And so that is completely outside. So if I say deleted this geometry, that line remains. And if I go in, you can see the line is there, but I actually, it's separate. So if I like was to grab it and try and move it, um, it's only a single line. Uh, and so this is gonna allow us, if I go here, here and back into scale, watch what happens. It'll snap. See that? See the and you know where a line is snapping to it when it goes green. See that green circle? That means uh, whatever you're moving is connecting with the end of another line. And so this is uh, 2.5 mil exactly. Done. Perfect. And that's the uh, circle I want. I will copy it by grabbing the move, hold down control, which means I'm going to be copying it, down right there, and now we have, really, this is actually all that we need. And I'll show you what this is all we need, because we only need to model this part, uh, well, technically this part. And with that, this is actually going to give us our sword. So, uh, I'm going to delete that, delete that. I'm going to click copy, so I'll just copy this, you know, uh, face right here. I'm going to move outside of the group now, okay? Because what I want to do, I'm going to be using a, a pretty cool tool called the push and pull tool, which is right here. So see here, push, pull. And it, what that does, any face that you select, so see how a face that's selected, you can turn it into a 3D model by grabbing it and see, it'll just extend it out like that. Whatever side you do, you can extend it up like that. Th that's what the push, pull tool does. And I'm going to do it to this face. But the thing is, if I did it inside the, uh, the, the grouping I've done, it's going to stick to the face. And I don't want it to stick. I want to be able to manipulate this new... Uh, block I'm making uh, after I do it. So I did here. Now, if I wanted to move this section, it's all stuck. Well, it does, if I'm trying to move it out, I can't move it out. I can't move it in, and I can't move it off. If I tried to move it up, it won't even allow me. I can't move it up. So I'm going to backspace. I'm going to select that face. I will copy it, go outside of the group, and then I'm going to paste in place. If you do paste in place, it'll place, sorry, it'll paste uh, the uh, face or model that you made in the exact same location that you copied it from, except now it's outside of the group. So I have that and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to make it the length of the sword right here, right up to the to the tip, okay? So now what we want is uh, we want to give us the same profile out of the blade. I'm going to see how I double click. If you click on one face, that'll select it. But if you double click, it'll then select all the lines around that face. This is important because this face is actually separate to the lines. I can delete the face and the lines remain. I step back, but if I select that and the lines, that's what happens. So you want to select everything. Double click uh, there. And this is why it's important that this is a, on a separate piece because if it was connected with this one, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm about to do. I'm going to go to scale. I'm going to scale this part. And by scaling this part, I'm going to angle uh, the rest in line with it. So I'm going to scale this down and I'm going to connect it right on line with where we want it. You'll notice what's happened here. A new line appeared, okay? Uh, this is because every face has to be perfectly flat, all right? And uh, because I have just made this line go down. So I've uh, good example, right? Uh, I'll grab this line and show you uh, what I mean. Uh, so I'm going to copy it here. See, this is the line. By reducing the size of this line here, I've actually changed the angle on it. Where before it was on this angle, I've actually now moved it down, which has skewed uh, this square along here to the fact that it can't be perfectly flat anymore. So to compensate, it has made a line down here. Now, you can get away with it. That's fine because you're going to just select the line and see in the toolbar, go down and see smooth surface. I can just click smooth, bang. Now it's an invisible line and you can't see it, okay? And it looks like, oh, it looks like a perfectly smooth thing. So that's not a problem. And we can do that with what happened on the edge bevel as well. So there, there, make it invisible. So now we still have the prominent edge bevel. That's all good. Um, and uh, we still got the sword. It's still got the, uh, the fuller and it's scaling all down in one seamless line. So that has given us the profile taper, but now what we want to add in is what will give us the distal taper, because swords in real life, they are thinner at this part compared to what they were down here. And so I'm just going to go in and uh, well, I'll get rid of uh, that line. And it's the same thing. Uh, we'll do the uh, the scale the tool. I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Um, if we did like 0.7, that would give us uh, an overall width of the blade of 4 mil at the tip. And uh, uh, you can change it. Like some swords even go down to like 2 mil. So if we scale that down to 0.6 even, uh, 
that's like, uh, yeah, that'll be like nearly two mil at the tip. But I'll keep it to around four mil just so we can see what we're doing and uh, we'll keep moving on with the blade. Now we can just duplicate this and copy it for each other corner. So that's not a problem. But now what we want to do, we want to copy that, I get it. Uh, copy, and I'm going to move back into this, uh, this group. And uh, we're going to paste in place. So now we have a new face that we're going to move. get rid of that. And so now what we have here is the tip. And uh, the tip is actually going to be pretty cool, but we need to model this separate because uh, uh, for actually, yeah, yeah, we do need to model it separate. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll move that up by 15, that's fine. So this is actually uh, uh, going to be a pretty cool little thing that we're going to do here. So now I want to delete this line, get rid of it, and I'm going to use this tool here, the follow me tool. So click on that. And we're going to click on this face. This is awesome. So it's like the push-pull tool, right? Except it's going to follow the line, all right? And uh, and this is going to be really cool. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I use that uh, on here? And I could have just had this face follow the line here. Well, if I did that, it would not have scaled it correctly. So if I click uh, this, move it off to the side, and I'll move it, uh, I need to move it more, uh, 10. This is what would happen if I used uh, that tool here. Uh, See, it doesn't, it doesn't work, it's all, it's all gone really wonky. It just, it doesn't work, but even if I was able to get it to scale along this line, watch what happens to the center line here. See how it's off center and it's also off angle as well? Uh, no, so that's why I didn't use that tool, but now I am going to use that tool here. So the follow me tool, grab it. This is really cool, we're gonna go up and then we're gonna go down and complete it, okay? Now you're gonna think this looks like quite a mess. Not yet, right? So now we're gonna click here, triple click, which will select everything. Now, what you'll notice here is you have faces intersecting with other faces, but they're not registering each other. They're like just going through. We want them to register and create lines on them. So we're going to uh, uh, select the select arrow, right click, and we want the faces to intersect. So intersect faces with model, click. So now all the intersect face things, and uh, we have what we want, but there's now also shapes that we don't need. So we're gonna get rid of them. So select, we're gonna get rid of these shapes here, and then we can delete the lines associated with them. And then we can get rid of these lines here as well. And you see what we have, what's already appearing? The tip of the blade. But there is one other little thing that we need to fix up before we can re-merge it with the strong of the blade, essentially. Uh, and that is that when we started this, okay, um, so if I flip this upside down, and that doesn't make it too sick, uh, and I grab a line and I just do a straight line here, okay, I'll go back and show you what's going on. So the face that we use to create the tip, right, I'll grab it. You'll notice that when I line it up, it doesn't line up anymore, all right? Uh, for this face to follow the line that we went along, it had to re-angle it in the same direction as that line, which is why we don't have a straight, why well, it's not straight along here, uh, but there's a very easy way to fix it. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna uh, go up, we're gonna create a new face. Uh, one is fine, go across, do it in line there along the blue axis, and then along the bottom, and so I'll create a new face. And this is what we need. We need the tip to end along this plane here for it to connect seamlessly to the blade. So select it, Intersect faces with model, done, and then we can get rid of this geometry here. It's no longer needed, and it will all line up correctly. So I'll just delete this now. And see how small some of this stuff can get? Again, just another advantage in modeling this at a 1 to 100 scale. Um, indeed. Get rid of that. There. There. Back down here. Oh, did I make a mistake? Let's see. I did! It's not lining up. Just another quirk of SketchUp, uh, but there's an easy way to fix it. Or is there? Yes, there should be. So if we just make a new line here and uh, get rid of that line, there we go. But because I want it to all be pretty, I just don't like how this line is now separated into two. So I'm going to remake that line. And uh, I'll do that. I'll bring that line back in. I'll delete this line. So why did I do that? Why did I draw a line here when I deleted that? Uh, this simple reason, if I deleted this without putting that line here, um, it would have done, oh, I guess I didn't need to, I was worried it would delete all the faces along here, but it didn't, so, uh, it wasn't as necessary as I thought, but anyway, so we're going to move back down, and uh, I want to get rid of that here, it's just me being a uh, snobby perfectionist, I'm like, ah, ah, see, see what happened then, I just deleted that whole line there when I deleted that, so to avoid that happening, I just redraw it, um, so I, I did predict that that's something like that would happen, so now if I delete there, get rid of that, and redraw it without having to redraw the whole line and roll hunky dory. Oh, what we see here, this is important, okay? Uh, every single face in SketchUp has a front and a back, and this is important when it comes to rendering, okay? Uh, white is actually front, blue is back, and I generally like everything front, and this all should be front, but the way I do that, if I, uh, I can flip the face, so where am I? Uh, reverse face, here we go. So now everything is uh, back facing, which isn't how you want it. So if I select everything and then do reverse, uh, reverse faces, now everything is, uh, the front face is facing the front of the model, which is what we want. All right, so see here, look at this. We got our tip. 
tip of the blade, and then we can just get rid of the stuff that we don't need. Right here, there. I'm gonna flip it upside down and delete the internal um, bits here, because we don't need these lines either. So if I get rid of this here, see, see this here. Let's get rid of these faces, because that's just um, messing up. And I mean, the computer is still rendering this geometry, and it's not even needed or seen, so we can just get rid of it. There, and there. So here we have, this is, this is the tip of the blade. Uh, Alright, so, now we are ready to assemble the blade, and we will have modelled uh, a whole blade. So I'm going to select all this, move it back down, I moved it by 10, so if I do 10, it's back there. Um, and now, I'm going to select that, go and copy, then delete it, and then I'm going to do paste in place, which puts it right there where it was uh, in the model, but now it's out the model. I'm going to grab a, that selection, move it out of the way, and now I'm going to assemble our blade. So this time, when I make a copy, I'm going to... Oh, sorry, I'll need more space, in case I overshoot, so I'll move it another. 10 centimeters away. Copying it all. I'm not going to separate it into a group. I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to move it up five. Okay, so what we want, you'll notice, hang on, it's backwards. The easy way to fix it is you flip it along. We obviously want to flip it along the green axis as we see here. So flip along green direction there. And now we're going to uh, combine it. Remember how everything sticks in SketchUp? We want it to stick this time. So I'm going to select this corner. I'm going to move it in to that corner there. Click, bang. They have con These two models have connected as one piece. And uh, then to get the bottom, same process. Triple click, sorry, triple click. I select it all, I'm moving it down along the blue axis, which is moving it down. And uh, by five, then I will flip it along the blue direction, grab the selection, line it up, click, done. I can get rid of these lines here now, there and there. So get rid of there. So now we're almost done. Uh, we just want to connect the tip. So now I'm just, I'm not copying, I'm just moving this uh, model as normal and it's gonna line up beautifully there. And so now we want to get rid of uh, the lines that we don't need. So we don't need this line and we don't need the center line. There's two ways to do it. You could try and select it all. Um, one, two, three, select it all. Oh, gee. <laughs> so see what I've done here? That circle I made, I honestly had too many faces on it. And so now the fuller is, has a lot of faces. And so if I was trying to make a simple model, I've actually made a mistake. A circle that got us the fuller, I should have uh, selected it and made the circle maybe out of 12 lines instead of, uh, you know, uh, I, the default is 24. And the fuller would only have that many lines connecting it. Uh, which would make a simpler model uh, overall. But look, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just something for you to remember when you're making your model. Uh, and here, uh, if, you, if this is just a model for rendering, but I was, I was actually intending to make a simple model uh, overall, but you know, you make mistakes uh, and we're still getting the effect that we want. So if we selected it all and we wanted to soften, uh, we wouldn't be able to do it perfectly because if we did soften edges, it'll start to soften those lines that we don't want. And you'll notice that some lines didn't disappear. So if we come back, you'll notice this line. Why didn't this line soften? Well, it can't delete these lines because there's actually a face that is still inside. So if we go inside, see how there's a face here? If we go here, this face is still So uh, because there's a face there, it can't make those lines invisible. So if we go inside and delete, see, uh, select the whole thing, delete that face. Now we can move it out, and if we selected it again, select these lines and do soften, now it'll soften that, and there we go. But the thing is, there was nice having a uh, measurement line uh, on the tip, and it softened that as well. So if we tried to get rid of it, one, two, three, select it all, and bring it back. If we want that, ah, see, so bringing that line there means we've also brought back the other lines. So softening isn't the uh, best option to do. So if we go back here, um, uh, you're going to do a mix, basically. So uh, we want to select this line here. Uh, sorry, no, we want to delete the faces again. So go in here. Delete the faces. There's also some. Oh no, that's. Oh, we need to duplicate the bottom. We'll do that as well. All right, let's do that now before we forget. So, select there because we're missing the bottom side of the tip of the blade. I copy that down. Flip along the blue, and I'll make sure we're getting lined up correctly. Line that up. There we go. And go inside here. Make sure. Ah, so it's that there. Get rid of that geometry. That face. So now we'll soften those lines and we'll also soften the center line. So to do that, we just want, uh, so we want to select it, right? But it's hard to, uh, you know, position the camera so it's in line with the selection tool. So see how at the bottom, it's not in line. So the way to do that, you just go camera, standard views, top. Now the uh, horizontal lines are in perfect uh, symmetry with this line here. And so what I want to do is do a selection of just the inside, right about like that, and uh, go soften. And then we can do it again, soften again, uh, till about there. And so now, we have our blade. Now, we can get rid of the secondary bevel. I kind of like having the secondary bevel line there at the moment uh, and get rid of the endpoints. And look at that. We have a sword blade with a distal taper and central fuller. The fuller is a bit hard to see, so if we change the lining, uh, so this is in, uh, we go here. Oh no, I mean, I'm in, I'm in line. Uh, sorry, go down to shadows. See shadows? And then click here, use sun for shading. Bang. 
And so now we can actually see a shadow of the fuller on the blade. It took a while to get there, but uh, it's actually quite simple. And it's because I'm explaining everything as I go. If I was just doing this uh, straight out without needing to explain it, it's actually it would have taken a lot quicker than uh, uh, what we've done here. But I'm not going to end here, okay? We're going to finish off this sword. And so this will probably be a really long video. Uh, but, you know, it's fun, it's, and uh, I want all the information in one place. So I'm going to make it a group, that is now the blade, and we'll move on to the cross guard. Uh, because we already understand some of the principles that we've gone into, hopefully it won't take us long, and I won't need to explain as much. So I'm just going to grab this uh, rectangle here, bring it out over here, and I'm going to start, and I copied it, obviously. And so now we are going to start working on the 3D uh, cross guard. So uh, push-pull, I'm going to bring it up. Remember, the blade is only 6 mil, but if I do uh, 1, so 1 centimeter high, and do a center line, uh, in fact, if we might want the the uh basically the face okay the uh cross section of the blade imprinted on the cross guard so we know where it would be positioned so i'm gonna copy that uh, go out and i'm gonna um uh, first of all i'm gonna paste i don't want it to stick so i don't need to delete it off the cross guard so i'm gonna make it into a group and then i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna select the center of this line so the center is there and then i'm gonna stick it right on the center of the cross guard and so now we know this is where the blade is meeting the cross guard this is where it's for moving down to now, I actually don't think the cross guard needs to be this thick, even for a real historical sword. We can make it a bit thinner. Uh, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it in uh, by uh, four mil, four millimeters. So this is the width or the depth of the cross guard here. And now we're going to make the shape. And uh, I don't want to do anything complex, but it's still going to look uh, pretty cool. I think you'll like what this cross guard will look like. And I want it kind of uh, pointed out. So it's going to have some similarity to this, where it's going to have a raised central ridge here. And it's going to have some shaping uh, on the top, on the top angle. Uh, but uh, to do even more, like the shaping here, that's more complex. If I go into here, see, see the, the geometry I had to build there to get the, the, these kind of points. Yeah, a little bit more work. Um, but anyway, so what we want, we might need a little bit more of an angle up. So if I go here, raise it by 3 mil, maybe that'll do, maybe that'll do. Um, give us some workspace there. And so I'm going to do a two-point uh, arc. And the minimum width of the cross guard. Okay, so basically, cross guards are thin because you don't want them to be the sword to be too heavy, and so they're going to be thin on one of two planes. And I can show the example here on my swords. So they can either be thin along this long plane here, or you can make them thin along this plane here. And so you'll notice my sword here. This has got a pretty thick cross guard going along here. But if I go down, you'll notice how thin it is along here. In fact, it's got the thinnest cross guard along this plane than all the swords here. Like this sword is a bit more chunky along this plane, whereas Regalium there is really thin. And this is to bring down the weight of the cross guard. Because cross guards should be as light as possible, but thick enough to be strong to be sorry, thick enough to then get the strength to resist sword strikes and stuff. And so if we go back to uh, our modeling line here. Uh, it's going to be mostly thin along this plane here, which means we can kind of make it a bit thick along this one. And so that means the minimum, if we go, so I want it to end about maybe, I'm going to go one up here. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. Right? Um, you might be getting confused, but uh, this is because I already have in my mind what I want this to look like. So if I go minimum distance, yeah, 0.25, that looks good. And that's going to be one of the ends of the arc. So here, um, 0.28, in, uh, there. So this is going to be the shape of our cross guard, yet there's too much distance between the edge of the blade and the top. So how about I'll bring it down and I'll try a new one. Is that... Uh, mm, it's getting closer. Uh, so actually, maybe I'll even work from the very bottom here and see how we go. If I bring it in 1.16. Yeah, yeah, that works, okay. For the uh, shape of the cross guard along this plane. Now remember, I only really need to make a quarter of it because I can double it up. And if I wanted like something a bit fancy-ish or spikes on the edge, I can just uh, do that here. Or I can have it flare out a little bit. So if I just did that, this is going to give me a bit of a spike on the edge of the cross guard. And a cross guard can be an offensive uh, tool, so why not? We'll give it a spike. And uh, we'll select this, grab it, and I'm going to just bring it out. Five. So that's that. You can get rid of that. Copy this. Flip along blue, bring it back, select it all, flip along green, bring it back, delete the center, push pull, one that was 0 0.06, no that was way too thin, not 0 0.6, 0 0.6 which is um, 6 mil, and look at that, we've got a semi watt stylized cross guard uh, for the sword, but I'm not happy with it, I want the uh, ends to have a bit more of a peak, because it looks cool. So I bring that up by a millimeter, and then I'm going to curve it down to about there, line that up, and to do that I'll then need to copy this little addition I've added, so down, I'll flip along the blue, bring it back up, get rid of those lines that we don't need, and try this again, there, it's looking a little bit better, uh, we want to get rid of these lines, we want it to look curved, so I'm just going to smoothen those out, 
same thing here. Smooth. And then it's just a matter of connecting it to the sword. And we want to line it up uh, accurately. So another reason why I have uh, this little piece of geometry here. So if I did a center line down, I can grab this uh, face, copy it there. I can select everything else. I'm going to make this a group. So that's separate. These are two separate groups. Go in here, delete that line. I'm going to select them both. And now I can line it up accurately right to the blade. There. Move it down. Move it in. So, see how it's not lining up yet? So we're going to move it down. We want it to snap. Okay. And that's the spot right there. Look at that. So you got our cross guard right there. Now, cross guard might be a bit too thin. We'll see how we go. Because now we've got the handle. So one issue I wasn't remembering, I was only lining up the cross guard to the blade and I forgot the width of the handle. Uh, so with that in mind, we can actually increase uh, the width of it so we can get a little bit more provision for the handle. So I'll just grab that and I'm scaling it up. Um, it's going to, I'll do point, one point two wider. But to do that now I need to <laughs> reposition it so it's uh, positioned correctly on the blade. And I'll just do that now. All right, so we have a little bit more room to uh, work with, with uh, the uh, handle now. And so, because this is in uh, another group, we can just draw straight on it. So I'm going to make a circle. This time I will remember to reduce the uh, lines of the circle. Actually, no, for this, uh, well, all right, it's already up. It's already reduced because I reduced it before. So we're going to go, uh, well, uh, we want about 3.5 wide. So 1.25, 1.7, I think we'll do. So that'll give us a 3.5 width. Then uh, we want... To, uh, make it an oval because uh, sword handles oval are better and uh, and see how, uh, see how sharp that line is I don't like how sharp that is so I'm actually going to do a more detailed circle so instead of 12 face it aligns making the circle and do 24 and then 1.7 there and, uh, grab that scale it down and so what I'm gonna do uh, jump into this one move it up and we want the width the height uh, 0 0.5 there. So remember the scaling issue. We want the scale to snap to a line. And so we've got that. We can delete that one. Copy this. Flip it along the blue. Chuck it back in. Clean it up. We don't want to delete the... Uh... Oh, that's right. So this line is actually on the, in the group. So if I want to delete that, I'll go in the group. That's a bit better. So now we can uh, delete them without any problems of deleting the handle. So... Uh... Let's have a look. We want the handle with something like them. Leave room for the pommel, sorry. 14 centimeters. Uh, yeah, obviously, that's not a lot longer than that. Let's try that again. So, 23 centimeters. There. Uh, handles see, Handles can actually be more complex uh, depending on how much detail you want to work into it. Uh, and I'll show you like a fully complete, you know, one of the more detailed handles I've ever made. And that's on this sword here. Uh, if you have a look at real swords, you'll notice that uh, they're generally thinner here and they get a bit fatter and more circular as you go down, but they're quite thin here on oval here so you can index the blade. Okay, so they're not perfect circles. And then I have uh, grip rings on top of it. So there's a, there's a little bit happening <laughs> in regards to this one. But maybe we can add grip rings and we will put an angle on it. But if we go here, uh, this handle is actually made up of several things. Uh, you'll notice it's oval here and it kind of comes out and then it goes in. So uh, this handle if we, is actually ra a rather complex bit of geometry. Uh, well, we'll simplify things for the sake of this model uh, going back. Uh, but I think you will be surprised at some of the cool things that we can do. So we have a, the beginning of our handle, as you see it. So we'll put some kind of ridges to, to get some gripping on. And that's not going to be too difficult. So grab this, copy it out, and move it by four. And center line uh, down where that center up. Okay, so now we want another circle. And this circle will be, and so the, this is going to be the width of the, uh, the grip line. So we'll do 0 0.8. No, we want 0 0.08. 0.08 there, and we need a face to draw on. So now we have a face to draw on, we can make a circle. So if this face wasn't here, uh, the circle wouldn't be lining up. Um, it'll try and line up with other things like the face here and stuff. And it's just so move forward now. Uh, want the face there again, and we get a circle. Now, this circle, because it's very small, that means we want the circle made out of as few faces as possible. So if we reselect it, we've got the option to change it. Uh, I'll make this circle out of uh, six six lines so it's going to be like which section essentially just like a hexagon thing or an octagon whatever it is so with that there we can delete these lines and here i'm going to delete the center line here i'm going to do the follow me tool remember that tool that we did to make the tip grab it and we're going to go all the way around click we've made a ring grab this uh for safety's sake i'm going to make it a group in case we want to edit something um but we are actually going to want this to stick to the handle um, you'll notice that we've got the wrong face, so I'll click that. Reverse face, so the outside you know, face is facing the outside. Um, and then I'm going to copy these ridges. Now 
actually, that's way too small. See how small that is? Uh, I'm going to go back and make it thicker so that you can actually see them and they're more prominent. Um, so that was my mistake. I made the circle too small. So I'm going to go back here, at least double it, if not more. So I'm going to grab this line. That was 0.1. So now I'll do point there. That's about as thick as it probably should be. Make a new face, new circle, around about there. Okay, and this will create a much more prominent ridge uh, for our handle. So delete the face, but keep the lines. For the follow me tool, go all the way around. Make, uh, reverse faces, make it a group, and position it on the handle. Is that the right size? About. That's better. That's a lot better. So run that there. I'm gonna move it up by eight. So now we have this nice kind of ridge. Um, and then we want it centered. So I want a center ring. Actually, not perfectly centered, actually. It's probably going to be off-centered a little bit. You want it a little bit up about there. Uh, so I'll do 10. And you'll notice I did that with my other sword as well. Uh, this central ridge is a little bit higher up uh, because your hand, like uh, for long swords, the length of the handle isn't uh, two kind of hand widths uh, perfectly apart. You know, in fact, the other hand is probably going to be a bit further down. Uh, so uh, that's why it doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. And I could have made the ridges even a little bit bigger, but that's, that's perfectly fine. So now um, I'm going to do something a little bit uh, tricky. So I'm going to grab these uh, shapes. I need, to, I need to select the whole thing there. I'll make it into a group. Select everything. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want these uh, groupings, these rings, to uh, stick to the the uh, main handle. Now, I'm going to copy this in case I make a mistake and I need to restart, which uh, happens more often than you would like to think. So that's there just in case we stuff up. Uh, so we're going to select it all. Um, and these rings, we want them to connect. So we're going to right-click and we're going to click Explode. Explode will simply open or explode the groupings uh, that are there. So now, this is all one piece. All right. So what we have here, we want to alter the shape a little bit. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to, uh, first off, move it all down so every single line is so I unsmooth it see the soften edges I'm unsoftening it so everything is open uh, here's an interesting thing about the selection tool and this is important if I wanted to select say these three uh, you know faces here I would select over them and done and you'll notice that it, even though I started the selection on this face I'm not selecting this face as I drag it. I'm only selecting every face that was fully done but watch what happens if I that was selecting from left to right watch what happens if I do a selection from right to left all right, so every single thing that uh, this box is now covering is going to be selected, even the things that it didn't fully uh, fully go over. But if you do left to right, it'll only select the things that the box has passed over completely. So it only selects that, but reverse there. So I want to select uh, the, these parts. So I only want to select <laughs> um, uh, this section here. See, see how I did that? And so now when I go into scale, um, I'll be able to scale it down. Why on earth is it doing double? <laughs> SketchUp can be weird sometimes. It, like technically, it shouldn't be doing this. Not not as I understand it, uh, but it's mirroring. This is the thing. Sometimes there are just some weird quirks that happen with this program that I've had to work through, and, and I'm kind of glad that one of these weird quirks has appeared uh, while I'm doing it, just to show you that SketchUp it's not a perfect program. It's weird things happen. So as I do that, that shouldn't be doing it. So the way I'm going to <laughs> fix it is I'm going to have to delete half of the geometry there. Ah, is it? ah, I. All right. Maybe, maybe because. I hadn't, put a, I hadn't half that. So now that I've half that circle, uh, let's see if that was just something happening by accident. Because I was, ah, that's what we want. So we want uh, this part of the handle to scale down point by point 0.7. And now we can do it with uh, this other part here as well. By point 0.7. See how we went. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. And so it gives some shaping to uh, the, uh, the grip. Um, and if we wanted, uh, you know, because there's some pretty cool things you can do. If we wanted to uh, have it different, so copy that out by one. What we can do is uh, well, we want to delete most of this geometry. So we're going to go camera, top, and uh, I am going to do a, uh, what this is, this is a right to left selection. Because I want to select these faces, but not this line and, and the lines there. And so by doing a right to left selection, I was able to do that. I can delete these circles. Ah, but see, I didn't grab everything. So if I now do... This will be tight. Another right to left selection. Select those lines. Ah, now they're, they're deleted. Why did I do that? Well, I could do something kind of cool here. I could select those lines, move them up along the red axis by what, say five. Uh, move this back in by one. I think I missed that. By one. I can then make a face uh, along here. Push pull it back in line there. So to give basically to give different a different shape to the handle. Um, no, it's not too bad. Uh, maybe I might leave it because I can easily just uh, uh, un uh, <laughs> totally, totally. I can easily uh, undo the change that I just did then by selecting these lines and just moving it back down. So I'll keep it like that for now and uh, select everything, smoothen it all up. 
So we have a, a bit of a bit of shape to the handle. And uh, like if I was being really, really <laughs> detailed, I'd try and make this into an oval. And there's a number of ways you can do it. And in actual fact, one way is kind of easy. So uh, if it's easy, why not try and show you now? I don't wanna, if it's going to be easy and it's not going to be too difficult, I can just quickly show you how to make an oval out of that, out of this in this section here. And uh, that's going to be a simple enough. I'll show you upside so down. Connect the line there, um, and then I want to do a two point arc. Six is fine, and we're going to bring it off by maybe 0.1. So a really soft oval. Actually, no. Let's let's do it a little bit bigger. So an arc there, two. So now, what we can do here, and complete that to one, to the center. Just bear with me, well, you'll see what I'm about to do in a second, and you'll be like, oh, that's cool. Well, maybe you'll be like that, but uh, I think it's cool. So now we have that, we can use the follow me tool again. Just like that face, follow me. Uh, and so we need it to line up. So depending on the angle that we do it on, we need it to go along this line here uh, gosh uh, I didn't finish off the line so to do it in a way that we can actually see it let me grab this and do it separately this will enable us to do the follow me tool uh, a lot easier so now we'll grab it come around come on no do it <laughs> there, there, watch it'll be a lot easier now so now uh, kind of now we can follow the line all the way across, complete it, and we have most of what we need. So then we can just complete that line, that line, that line, there, 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 triple click, one, two, three, delete that, triple click, one, two, three, triple click, reverse faces, triple click, soften. So see what we've done here? Now we have an ovoid, <laughs> or an oval shape for the center part. So I'll grab that and reconnect it. So see the, see the options that you have here? And so now we have kind of like an oval handle. It might be too fat now. <laughs> um, and uh, in, and like, so this part doesn't really seem to fit, but I'll copy it out just in case I ruin it again. Um, I'm gonna grab this ridge, bring it down. We want it 0.8. Delete this stuff. Come back in here and uh, bring it all the way down. First face. Does that look better? Maybe, maybe not. Kind of. <laughs> anyway, so you've got a couple of options. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could do the handle. But look, I'll just leave the handle there because we clearly have uh, different uh, options to be able to do it. And we'll quickly do a wheel pummel. Wheel pummel's pretty easy. We want higher details, so we 24. Um, lining it up, though, can be tricky. So um, by doing it in line here, I will be able to line it up with the handle. So I'll do six out um, circle. Um, that be too big for the wheel pump. No, no, that's about maybe the right size. Uh, if not, uh, well, you live in your lane. Oh, we're basically going to be doing the follow me tool again. Uh, so I'm going to do another circle. Grab this. And to about, yeah, there. Grab the circle, copy it, raise it up on the blue axis. Um, and we want it, um, sorry, 0.5. Sorry, about 0.7. Right. There is a method to my madness. Uh, just bear with me. So, 0.5. Uh, give us the line there, and so now we will do a curve. Bring that out there, two point curve. We uh, probably four on this curve here. Um, keep it in line on the circle out there, and we are pretty much ready to do the wheel pummel already. It's going to be that easy. So we'll delete this stuff. Delete this stuff. Delete that. Um, delete that. Grab that. Delete that. Circle it around, uh, connect it, put a face on there, and we have a bit of a wheel pummel ready. It's not very, it's not sticking out a lot. I raise this a little bit, or oh, maybe point one. Yeah, let's raise it a bit, it's not too bad. One, two, three, select it all, copy it down, flip along the blue, bring it back up. That's, uh, remember how it always sticks to it, it's like everything has glue. You can grab the line, center line, delete the center line, grab this, make it a group. Come back to the handle. I'm gonna uh, delete this stuff in here. So I want to be able to grab uh, this face here. And I'm gonna extend it out because this will essentially be extending into the pummel. Grab the pummel. It's already in line, so we just need to move it down along the red axis. Three, uh, we lost it. Three. Uh, pummel is attached. And look at that. We have a sword. 
kind of. We need to fix some things. It's looking a bit janky. Uh, I don't like janky. So I'm going <coughs> to move that up by about three. Grab that, move that by three again. That's a bit more. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, the cross guard is a bit too short uh, on the sides. So, easy way to uh, set the cross guard. We're going to select those lines, bring it out by 1.5 on each edge. 1.5 there. It's a little bit better, but if you know the standard proportions of long swords, it's still that cross guard still looks a bit short on the edges. So I'm gonna go back in and extend it a little bit more. So I'm gonna try it out. That's a bit better. And look at that. We have a long sword, a distal taper with fuller 3D model long sword. I actually think uh, our previous bottom part of the cross guard will look better on the handle. So if we just come in here and we get rid of that, and we grab this and put it back move it and put it back right there let's just see how that looks and uh, you know it's not bad it's not bad uh give a bit of a table of course we're missing something so we'll just um we need to basically uh bring back the line geometry so we can edit it a little so we'll go down here and then we're gonna uh, probably grab the that part of uh, the model and uh, um, uh, put it about there um, uh, yeah so about there looks good and then if we grab this one, and we'll scale it back a little. So how is that looking? We select it all, smooth it all up, move a bit more. How are we looking here? Not bad, not too bad. And uh, you'll see that there's not a bit of a connection there, so we'll just go in there, push-pull that through, select it, smooth it. Uh, there's a bit of a line here, but that's also the result of the pummel being too thin. So to fix that, we'll just uh, select the top, raise it by, let's say, 0.3, uh, select the bottom and lower the bottom by 0.3 again, and uh, there, we've got an appropriate sized pummel. Uh, it's not looking too bad. In fact, the sword is pretty much done, though I do want to actually show you something cool with the cross guard, because I did cut some corners to be a bit simple with the cross guard, but we can make it a bit more complex with not too much additional work. But to save time, I'm going to jump to the two drawn faces that I'll need uh, to show you how to make a really cool cross guard, even better than what we have here, with very little work. Okay, so I've just quickly drawn uh, these two shapes here, okay? Uh, one on, you know, just flat on the ground and one standing up right next to it and then and this is going this top one is the top silhouette or the side silhouette i should say of the cross guard and this one will be the top silhouette of the cross guard and then we just grab the push pull through tool we go up by two and uh, do that go by 10 make sure they are fully intersecting and then we go triple click uh then we want intersect faces with the model and then watch what we are left with uh when we get rid of uh, these uh, little bits of geometry here. So if we get rid of this, and then we get rid of these parts, and then it's just a simple matter of uh, deleting these lines that we don't want. So those ones there, and then we'll get rid of uh, these ones here, and then we'll look at this cool thing that we are left with. A pretty sweet looking cross guard. And so you can actually use this method to design lots of styles of cross guards. Uh, so sky, it, skies is the limit. Then we just grab that all, and uh, we want some of that line to remain. And so what I'm doing, I'm holding down shift, which is the select or deselect. I'm deselecting that line, then I'm gonna go smooth all the edges, unselect, and then we have pretty nice looking cross guard. This cross guard lined up accurately uh, with uh, the model. So I'm just gonna do a new line there. And uh, once we have that, we can basically delete that one. We don't really need it anymore. We're gonna make this into a group, uh, but then we also want a measurement line so we can um, uh, line it up with the model as we have it. I don't wanna do that. Just wanna uh, grab it like normal. And we're gonna go in, and that line that we put down there is going to help us move in this cross guard at the right position. And it's going to be slightly tricky, uh, but also not. So we're going to select that in the middle, and then <laughs> I'm going to go in. I'm going to zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, right until I am inside here. And uh, if we just select that, that'll be on the middle there. But, ah, I see what, we, what was happening. So if we uh, select here, move inside, and then there. Ah, there's the measurement line that we want, I do believe. So I'll go out, select that, and we're going to move back in, find that the center of this line again. Which was about there and we're going to line it up with the center right there and then bang beautiful sitting right where it needs to be and oh oh that's a nice looking cross card i like that one 
This is turning out to be quite the elegant looking longsword. So we can get rid of this line that we were measuring it all up for and uh, select it. So see how it won't let us soften it? That's because a face has been made by that line. And, uh, and it will not allow, you know, this program will not uh, make invisible lines if there's geometry attached to it or a face. And so if we just go in, delete that face inside, then we can soften it up and make it invisible. So we don't have that line sticking out there. And we have a pretty awesome looking uh, longsword. So let's select it all. We're going to make a copy of it, bring it out of here so we're not getting, uh, seeing all the other stuff nearby it. And let's add, uh, quickly add some color to it. So we'll go up to the materials. We want a nice kind of gray, triple click, like uh, that gray. And then the cross guard will make out of a darker steel kind of a color. So triple there. And then same with the pummel. And then we will make the handle kind of a leather texture right there. And there we go. Uh, let's get rid of the lines on the sword, actually. So just these lines here. Um, I'm not deleting them, okay? I'm just going to be making them invisible. Uh, because the secondary bevel is not too prominent. So uh, I did it the wrong way, so there. And then I'm just going to select these lines going along right there. Then go down to make invisible. Gee, that, that looks better. Um, and same thing right here. So I'm just going to select these lines about there and there we go except let's go to that one too oh gee that looks pretty good uh just to add some contrast uh, let's change the background intensity so um Oh, that's a cool looking long sword. But there's one last thing we would want to do because we've made this awesome model, uh, but we, we might want to show it off. So how do we export it as a 2D JPEG? Well, first we want to pick an angle that we like. And if we want to make follow-up uh, pictures from the same angle, we might want to return to it. So if we go camera, oh, sorry, view, animation, add scene, just go create scene. So what this means is if I'm zoomed in here, you click on the scene right up here and it'll take us back to that position. And so what I'm going to do, I'll get rid of the axis, uh, update the scene because if I click on the scene, it'll bring the axis back. And so we'll get rid of the axis and then update it update scene and then we go down to export 2d graphic so click here uh, you can pick any location for it uh, options and i'm doing it as a 4000 wide pixel image very high detail uh, but it'll also look pretty cool and so uh, go okay saw tutorial looking good export it and now let's take a look at what it looks like. Look at this picture. And so you can change the angle and make a new picture of whatever angle you want on this sword. This is how I make the pictures for, of the swords in my videos and stuff like that when I'm using 3D models. And uh, it's a high res image, so I can zoom it across uh, and we can have a look and see it in all its glory. And there we go. This is how we made our very own 3D model of an awesome looking long sword. Hope you guys have enjoyed. It's a bit of a longer video, but I wanted to, you know, I wanted the whole process in one video. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, farewell. Thank you.